There's actually reason in both logic and evidence to think that running companies as if your sole job is to maximize shareholder value, in fact, is harmful to shareholders. I'm going to start with the evidence first, because I actually find the evidence really somewhat alarming. So these are facts. These are things we know. Number one, American companies are disappearing. The number of publicly listed U.S. firms has declined by more than 40 percent in the last 15 years. If this were a species, we would call it endangered. By the way, UK firms are disappearing faster. The number of UK listed companies has declined by 50%. Number two, the life expectancy of large corporations has declined. From around 75 years in the 1920s, the, Fortune 5, the average Fortune 500 company was a Fortune 500 company for 75 years. You want to know what that figure is today? According to Steve Denning at Forbes, 15 years and falling. You can't even get a kid graduated from high school in 15 years. And that is actually the life expectancy of publicly listed companies. Now, at this point, some of my free market friends from Chicago usually start jumping up and down, yelling, creative destruction, creative destruction, creative destruction, for you Schumpeter fans, you know, the sociology majors. And I would say, no, the Here's the problem. If it were creative destruction, all of this destruction of large public companies would be generating profits for shareholders. So here is the most dreadful figure of all. By some accounts, actually, shareholders have net lost money investing in stocks since 1993. The returns from investing in public equity, by some measures, have actually been negative for the past 20 years. And certainly we know that by a lot of measures, bonds have outperformed stocks for the first time in, I believe, recorded history. I believe we've never seen a situation where stocks, which being higher risk, should offer higher returns, are actually generating lower returns than corporate bonds. So what that says, suggests to me is that all of, this, all of this embracing of shareholder value as the purpose of the corporation, for some reason, is not actually translating into better results for shareholders, at least not translating into better results for shareholders as a class over time. And it is that last observation that is most critical, I think, for understanding the fundamental flaw in the notion that the purpose of the corporation ought to be to maximize shareholder value. And this fundamental flaw is that the concept of shareholder value is incoherent. Why is it incoherent? There can be no single shareholder value because, in fact, the shareholder as an entity does not exist. It's a fiction. It's a platonic ideal with no correspondent in the real world.